Hello again. You have returned to learn the secrets of another weapon. A weapon whose incredible reach and incredible kit synergy make it one of the most dangerous and devastating shooters in the current meta. The Foil Squeezer. You want to know of this weapon's slaying potential, and what to do to ensure that you do not become one of its victims. Lucky for you, I've put a bottle of champagne on ice for this very occasion. Let us begin. Let's start by looking at what makes this weapon so strong in the first place. When considering the foil squeezer, it can be helpful to compare it to the last weapon we examined, the Kenza 52 Gal. This is because, at a high level, the foil squeezer can be described as everything that the Kenza 52 isn't, for better or worse. The Kenza 52 Gal was an offensive powerhouse whose kit gave it strong defensive capabilities as well. However, it had three main deficiencies. Its range was middle of the pack at best, its base accuracy was terrible, and while the Booyah Bomb is a great special, it's also a fairly slow one, needing a second or two to charge and exploding slowly when it lands. In contrast, the Squeezer is not nearly as bloodthirsty as the 52. The maximum damage the weapon can do in a single shot is 38, and while main power-up can boost your damage to just below 50, fall-off can cut your damage all the way down to 15, which means the number of shots needed to take down an opponent can vary widely. So how can a weapon with damage this unpredictable be an effective slayer? It's because the three weaknesses of the Kenza 52 Gal are the biggest strengths of the Foil Squeezer. The Squeezer features two firing modes. The first is Continuous Firing Mode, which is activated by holding down the ZR button. This mode actually has less range than the 52 Gal and is just as inaccurate. The chance of an off-target shot goes from 1% to 25% as the weapon continues shooting, and jumping immediately sets this chance to 40%. It's a mode that can be useful for painting and map control, but you won't take down many foes with it. The weapon's true power lies in its second firing mode, Burst Firing Mode, which is activated by continuously tapping the ZR button. This mode not only outranges the 52 by a wide margin, it outranges the majority of weapons in the game, and is not that far off from the incredible range of the Jet Squelcher. In terms of shot randomness, Burst Firing a Squeezer has none, as in zero, as in the shot will always go where you tell it to, even if you're jumping. With such long range and pinpoint accuracy, the Squeezer is more effective at dialing long distance than AT&T and can knock you out long before you have the chance to challenge it. So why does the Foil Squeezer dominate the current meta while its vanilla cousin is rarely seen in competitive play? It's because of the Foil Squeezer's terrifying kit synergy. Splat Bombs are a solid option for poking at enemies and forcing them to move, and Bubble Blower produces three large ink bubbles that can either be used as shields to protect you or detonated to take out opponents. Together, however, they form one of the scariest combinations in all of Splatoon 2. The Bubble Bomb Combo! The trick works like this. Hit your first bubble with a Splat Bomb, then launch your other bubbles and throw another bomb into them. The order of bombing and bubbling can vary, and you can choose to use two bubbles instead of three, but the bottom line is that the second bomb will detonate the bubbles instantly, and if you're fast, the time between launching and exploding the bubbles can be near zero. This means that your opponents are at risk at getting splatted the moment the bubbles hit the field, and they'll either need to clear out or find cover as long as the bubbles are present. Put all this together, and the Foil Squeezer becomes as dangerous a weapon to deal with as the Kenza 52, even without the 52's firepower and splash wall. The Squeezer's range and accuracy allows it to cover a large area of the map and threaten opponents from a mile away and it can instantly take control of an area using its bubble bomb combo. Few weapons can match its long-range prowess, and those that do cannot turn into a ticking time bomb at will. So how do you take on an opponent with such awesome power? First, let's consult a renowned Splatoon 2 tactician, former Raiders owner Al Davis, who said simply that speed kills. Just because a weapon can reach you doesn't mean it can hit you and even a weapon with perfect accuracy will miss if its crosshairs are not on its target. The Squeezer requires a high degree of mechanical skill to be used effectively, and your goal will be to test that skill by moving around, using cover, 
and by generally closing the distance between you and the squeezer as quickly as possible. The squeezer's relatively slow fire rate can be a liability at close range, so your goal is to get in its face and force it to fight on your terms. There are two gear perks that can help you with this goal. First, since swimming through ink is your primary movement option, using the Swim Speed Up gear perk can help you get to your destination as quickly as possible. This ability is helpful no matter who you're up against, but it's especially helpful against squeezers because it makes it harder to track you with the weapon and limits the time they have to take you down. Second, since squeezers will try to keep their distance from you and stay close to their own ink, the ink resistance ability can allow you to swim through contested areas with scattered traces of enemy ink without losing your speed or taking damage. Together, these abilities will let you traverse the map quickly and freely even when you may not have complete map control, and thus make it difficult for a burst firing squeezer to catch you. Now, let's talk about sub weapons. Standard splat and suction bombs are a useful way to get a squeezer moving, but they're not as useful here as they are against the 52 because the squeezer is not rooted to a single position by a splash wall. These can be a temporary distraction to help you take a more advantageous position, but a squeezer on the move is no less dangerous than a stationary one. If you want to push a squeezer on its own turf, a quick way to do it is with a curling bomb. Curling bombs move along the floor in a straight line, bouncing off walls and leaving a trail of ink along the way, until their timer expires and the bomb explodes. This allows you to quickly blaze a trail through enemy territory by throwing a bomb at your target and then using the path it leaves behind to move in yourself. It's an effective way to close the gap between you and an enemy squeezer, but it's also a very predictable one since your opponent will know exactly where you're going, so you have to be careful when you approach. Another possibility is to use a splash wall to put a temporary barrier between you and your opponent to let you engage with them safely. This is not as useful for short-range weapons because the splash wall is stuck in place once thrown, but weapons with enough range to challenge a squeezer from a distance can use the added protection to put more pressure on your target. The wall can also stop the advance of bubbles from the bubble blower and potentially deny the squeezer control over a key area. Of course, it's all fun and games against the squeezer until the bubble bomb combo comes out. When the bubbles hit the field, in the immortal words of Sammy Kershaw, you'll want to be anywhere but here. To make sure you're not caught in a bad spot, you'll need something that you can't shoot, throw, or equip. Special awareness. When participating in an ink battle, the status of each player is shown at the top of the screen, showing you what weapon they're using, whether they are currently dead or alive, and most importantly, whether or not their special weapon is charged. There's also a visual cue on the player itself, as a player with their special ready will have glowing hair that appears to be blowing in the wind. When the foil squeezer player icon is in its normal state, you're free to challenge them knowing that their special isn't ready. But the moment that icon lights up, they're ready to deploy their bubbles, which should be your cue to get gone fast. Finally, let's talk about special weapons. Ideally, you'll want to use a weapon that can both attack your opponent from a safe distance and quickly neutralize any enemy bubbles that are in the area. Your best option here is a Booyah Bomb, which can be charged and thrown from far beyond the squeezer's range and will neutralize the bubbles with its explosion, although it may not destroy them entirely. However, as I mentioned earlier, the bomb will take some time to charge and launch, so you'll want to try and anticipate the use of the bubbles, such as when the enemy squeezer is trying to claim a key position or objective, so your bomb will be ready when you need it. Now, let's consider the worst case scenario. You've made your move, you're about to engage the foil squeezer, and they suddenly throw their bubbles right into your face. A booyah bomb won't charge quickly enough to foil your opponent's plot, and while some special weapons, such as the baller, might provide some protection against the incoming blast, the bubbles are still going to explode and wreak havoc. What you need is a break glass, panic button special, an Uno reverse card that will wipe out the bubbles and potentially even the foil squeezer at the same time. Enter the worst special in the game, Splashdown. Splashdown's offensive ability is generally limited in top-tier play, as players are generally able to quickly aim their weapons upward and shoot the user out of the sky. However, Splashdown still has some utility when used in a defensive context, and countering Bubble Blower is a great example. Most special weapons have a damage multiplier against bubbles between 1 and 3, but Splashdown gets an obscene 20x multiplier against them. 
meaning that any bubble even remotely near a splashdown will get wiped off the face of the map. And any opponent too close to the center of the splashdown blast will meet the same fate. The bubble blower user loses the ability to use their main weapon when launching bubbles, so their only hope is to try and pop their bubbles before the splashdown lands, which can be tricky given the splashdown's short deployment time. Just as Al Davis declared, speed is the primary key to taking down a foil squeezer. Speed to get in the user's face, speed to escape and keep your distance from the bubble bomb combo, and speed to neutralize the bubbles the moment they arrive if necessary. By channeling your inner Sonic, you can challenge, mitigate, and eliminate the foil squeezer before they even know what hit them. So now that we know the squeezer's weaknesses, what weapons give us the best chance for success against it? To combat the squeezer, we will either need a way to quickly and safely engage it up close, or we will need to be able to neutralize it from a distance and avoid risking our lives to the bubble bomb combo. Number one, the sploosh -matic. If we're going to knock out a foil squeezer, then we've got to be fast, and there are a few things faster than a sploosh -matic with a curling bomb. The combination of the weapon's lightweight and the bomb's ability to blaze a trail anywhere on the map means that you can get in a squeezer's face fast, and once you do, the weapon's three-shot kill and fast fire rate will let you make quick work of your opponent. If the bubbles come out, you can make quick work of them with your splashdown, leaving your opponent in a real bind. The main drawback to the sploosh is that its non-existent range means you have to be right on top of your opponent to take them out, and the predictable path of your curling bomb will give the squeezer advance notice of your approach. So you may want to vary your speed, delay your approach for a moment after throwing the bomb, or use an ability such as Ninja Squid to avoid giving yourself away. Number 2. The 96 Gal Deco If you're hesitant to take on a squeezer up close, the Bedazzled 96 is an option worth considering. Its range is only slightly less than the squeezer's, and this gap can be safely closed by using a splash wall to take and hold a stronger position. Similarly, its ability to kill in two shots means that even with less than perfect accuracy, you won't need to land as many shots to take down your target. Against the bubble bomb combo, you can either fall back to a safer position, use your wall to block the bubble's advance, or use your splashdown to wipe out the bubbles entirely. The 96 is a solid combination of range, power, and survivability, and it has more than enough tools to ruin a foil squeezer's day. Number three, the Camo Tentabrella. If there isn't any cover to use between you and a foil squeezer, why not just bring your own? The Tentabrella's main selling point is its giant shield that can be quickly launched towards any opponent, essentially providing a mobile splash wall for you to use as you approach. Much like the 96 Deco, the Big Brella also brings some serious range and power to the table, letting you take down an opponent in two shots or potentially even one. Against the Bubble Bomb combo, you'll want to rely on the synergy of the Camo Kit. The Ultra Stamp can take down a bubble in a few swings, but leaves the user vulnerable to flanks or bubbles from another direction. But if used in conjunction with a launch shield, your backside can be protected from any stray shots or explosions. Number four, the Heavy Splatling Remix. The goal of the Heavy Splatling, regardless of the opponent it's facing, is to keep that opponent at arm's length and get them before they get you. The Remix version of the weapon matches up well against a foil squeezer. It's got better range to keep the squeezer at a distance, it's got a booyah bomb to counter the bubble blower, and it's got point sensors to help at least keep tabs on its opponents and avoid any nasty surprises. The main issues here are the Splatling's low mobility and shot charge time, so you'll need to be careful of any splat bombs the squeezer tosses your way. Number 5. The Kenza 52 Gal. You could probably make a credible case for this weapon to make the list no matter what weapon it's countering, but the Kenza 52's kit can cause some real problems for the foil squeezer. You've got a splash wall to help you get close and make up for the weapon's shorter range, you've got a two-shot kill that will make quick work of any squeezer it can reach, and you've got a booyah bomb to help pitch in against the bubble bomb combo when it appears. It's not the most mobile weapon in the world, but with its impressive combination of offense and defense, it doesn't have to be. In conclusion, the Foil Squeezer is a powerful weapon that forces every member of the opposing team to adapt and adjust to its playstyle. In the hands of a skilled player, the weapon's impressive reach and unfailing accuracy can control and dominate large areas of the map, 
and the threat of an insta-popping bubble bomb combo strikes terror into the hearts of even the most hardened Splatoon veterans. The weapon is not infallible, however, and with the right tools and the right approach, you have the chance to defy the meta, defeat the foil squeezer, and claim victory. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all in a future video. So long!